Hi everyone. I have a property with some really interesting elevations. It also holds and discharges a lot of water. And as a result of the way I want to use the property, um, it's required me to put in a lot of culvert crossings. And this is one example of that. This is a 20 foot ADS 15 inch culvert pipe. And I use ADS one because it's lighter, it's cheaper, and basically it's just as durable. So um, I need it to run cars over it and run a tractor over it. So it needs to be that functional. So that's why I've put all of these in. And one of the two most important things, a base and its slope. And this one looks good. I'll lift that up. Let's pray that now that I validated the slope and that water will actually run through this properly, it's time to set this culvert in place. And, and I do that before I put the aggregate on top of it. And to do that, uh, or to do this one, I, I drove in some two by two post, put a cross brace on it, some center supports, and it's good to go. Um, this, these two by twos that I put in actually go down into clay and I need to use a jack to get them out. Uh, technically I could break them and leave there, but that's how I do it. Uh, I'm using sand over this with a little bit of clay mixture in it. It works out just right. So there was some good and some bad with this particular site location. The first thing was I didn't need an excavator. Uh, and typically you need an excavator when you put in a culvert. And for all the other culverts I did on the property, I needed an excavator. Um, you can't tell here, but there's a, about an 18 to 20 inch elevation change. Um, and because of that, and because of the condition of the channel, I was able to take my bucket and just scrape out the channel. It was in good shape. And then lay a thin coating of sand um, to make sure it was flat and the slope was good. And this was ready to go. Now the bad was the distance that I had to bring the film material across the property on an old trail. Um, it was about 1,600 feet. I, ended up bringing the, the fill material bucket by bucket over across the property. And, you know, I won't go into the reasons why I did that. I would have preferred not to do that, but that was essentially the case. It was fine, you know, I have the cab, the radio was on, air was on, it, you know, it was a nice ride. It took a little longer than it should have, but uh, it still worked out very nicely. In this clip, you get a better view and understanding of that elevation change. When I drive the tractor up there, you'll, you'll see that quite clearly. And what I'm doing now is, you know, I'm hauling all the material over and I think I have enough on it, so I'm going to start compacting it. I'm going to use the bucket for that and I'm going to drive up on it and use the tires and the weight of the tractor to compact this. One thing to note, you know, when I'm doing it here, but also if, if you're putting in a culvert, make sure you have enough fill material on top of it before you start to do the compaction. You don't want to crush the culvert, you know, add any additional stress to it. So you can see when I back out here just how much it is compacting, um, just running the tires on it. And you'll continue to do that. I, I have some more material to add here, but overall, you know, it does take a while to compact. You're going to drive over it several times and it's going to settle. So it's, you know, over time going to be a little bit lower than, you know, where you, you left it or think it should be. So account for that. Okay, now this crossing's starting to take shape. I've done the initial compaction. I've hauled over about 20 yards of sand, and I, I'm going to continue to haul over sand. And I'm not looking to, to add more sand to the top. I will. I'll crown this and, and make sure the rain runs off at nice. But more importantly to me is the, the angle of this slope driving up uh, this crossing. I have some long implements. Uh, one of them's a brush hog. It's a six footer, so it hangs out way beyond the tractor. And I don't want that to hit when you know I, I go up this slope and, uh, and the brush hog could potentially hit on the back there. So that's the minimum for me. Um, I think I'm in good shape right here. I, one other note is you have to determine how you're gonna cover your sand or or cover the filled material that you have. Well, from my perspective and, and what's customary up here is you put limestone on the top, you use some rock covering there. You could use uh, 
topsoil and just grow grass over it, which would be fine. But for me, I'm going to wait uh, to determine how I'm going to top this culvert. Uh, I have some time, with, which gives me some flexibility. And my primary purpose was to be able to get the tractor and, and my truck over to the other side of the property so I could start using it. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this settle for a season and then determine how I'm going to top it. And if I need to add sand at that point, I'm going to add some sand because we're going to get some settling certainly. But uh, I think that's the best approach here. This isn't... Uh, you know, out in front of the house, this is in, in, in the middle of the woods, so I don't think it'll be any issue at all, and I think I'll end up with a better result. This is what I was referring to when uh, I said I was going to jack out these, you know, these stabilizer posts. Essentially, they're down in there, and they're in the clay, they're tough to pull out. If you want to pull out a post, uh, whether it's this one or a fence post, just wrap a chain around it get a heavy duty jack and lift up and they come right out and that's what I'm doing here. So now that you have all your aggregate over, you've done your compaction, the last step is to make sure that the culvert ends are stabilized and I've done that with some landscape fabric and some field stone. Um, and that's, that can be done in many different ways, that's the way I've done it. Uh, I'm going to cut away to a shot that shows one of the culverts that I've done and this is a completed culvert. Um, same thing, landscape fabric covered by field stone and what you're looking for is just to stabilize it so you don't get any unexpected erosion. Um, so that's essentially what I've done here. Um, again, I'm letting this uh, settle over the, the spring and, and I'm, I'm sorry, over the winter and the spring and then I'll come back through, add any sand and, and really make this culvert end look a little nicer. But it's doing the job that it is designed to do and, and that is to stop any erosion and hold this in place. So hopefully there's something in here that helped you out and uh, I'll be talking to you. Thank you.